We're Pinewood Studios outside of London, England, on the set of The Man with the Golden Gun. And these gentlemen here are two of the stars of the picture. And uh, I'd like you to know them. Starting at my far right is Hervé Villachez. And the tall gentleman next to me here. The taller gentleman. <laughs> is, is Christopher Lee. And you know, as I look at the three of us standing here, I'm rem reminded of the vaudeville team of some years ago. Lo Heighton Stanley. Did you ever hear of them? No, alas, Did I you have. ever? No. Okay. And I thought you were going to say Wayburn Fields or something. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, and we're sort of the counterpart of that because there could be low and really? you could be height. Mm. And I could be Stanley because mm. Stanley was the one in the middle. Well, we call you Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we sit down? I think we'll make it easier for the cameraman and the boom man. And we'll continue our, our chat here. You know, I suppose everybody, in a way, I identify more with you than I do with Christopher because uh, I'm a little less than average height for, uh, for a woman, I suppose. And I think we all learn to cope eventually. God willing, we learn to cope with whatever, you know, whatever it is. But I'm thinking of one time when being shorter than average, I almost didn't cope with it. And it was uh, at an at a audience of the Pope, and it was a, oh. a fantastic <laughs> crowd. And when it broke up, uh, I was completely surrounded by people. All I could see, the backs of people and the sides of people, yeah. and I couldn't breathe. And I really got a little bit of terror. And it's the only time in my life I've ever been truly frightened. I get kind of frightened when I think back on it. Which what Pope was this? Uh, pardon me? Which Pope? Pope, Pope yeah. Pius XII. Oh. Because... At Castle of God you, You're talking about um, size there. I have only once been presented to the Pope, and that was John the Twenty-Third. It was only for me to say anything about him. The world knows it. And uh, I started to, not to kneel, because I'm not a Roman Catholic, but to bow. And he obviously thought I was going to kneel. And he said to me, don't kneel, don't kneel, otherwise people will think that, I'm, that you're frightened of me. Oh, really? Why are you kneeling in front of me? Why are you going to kneel? People will think maybe you're frightened of me. He had a most fantastic sense of humor, <laughs> as everybody knows. Yes. You know, he was a man unlike anyone. Yes, I think, you know, if, if there had to be a popularity poll of oh. popes, at least in recent years, he would certainly be the winner. Every what is the most uh, frightening or most horrible moment you've had due to the fact that you're three, three feet ten? Oh. I don't remember any of Working with me, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not frightening, but... Um, like you said, a crowd, a crowd is kind of frightening, but not because I'm afraid of them. It's because I, sometimes I get physically hurt by, you know, an umbrella or a bag or... But it's not, you know, they don't know. I mean, um, sometimes when I go to the station and uh, we go to the train, and a lot of times, I mean, that happens, but it's not frightening, frightening. I can cope with it. I just push people here, people there. Or I just put my hand on, on guard and nobody can push it back. So I've got hair here and hair, you know, a lot of room around me. But I don't remember anything really frightening me that much. Being six feet tall, does it still have inconveniences for you, Christopher? You mean in, in real life? Yes, in real life. You're six feet four. I'm six foot four, yes. Uh, Inconvenience. Inconveniences. Inconveniences, yes. yes. Um, getting into cars, uh, sometimes taxis, um, sometimes if I have to, uh, getting in a bus, you know, unable to stand up, unable to sit down, sometimes in aeroplanes, apart from the fact that that's what really frightens me, which is flying. Uh, I, unless I'm lucky, I'm always uncomfortable, always, and everybody who is over six foot will know exactly what I mean. You know, your knees are always around your chin somewhere. <laughs> Well, particularly when you're packed together in an aeroplane. And indeed, as I said, in a car, unless it's, luckily enough, a car that I'm used to being in. Otherwise, it's got space. And beds are always too short. That is a great problem, I must say, a very great problem. In fact, when we were making this picture in um, Bangkok, uh, they made a special bed for me, which is unlike anything I've ever seen in the whole of my life. I think you saw it. They Ir extended Irving is enjoying it. enjoying just well, thinking about it. <laughs> they extended this bed. I can't tell you what it looked like. Something very bizarre, something out of Charles Adams. Uh, it, they made it, I think, nine and a half feet long, so I don't know what they were expecting. <laughs> but uh, I think they were a little disappointed and thought that I was perhaps the smallest of the family when I came in. But in point of fact, it is a problem. Yes, of course it is. 
Mm, yes. Your wife is how tall? She's 5'9". Yes, so that, that's just My fine. daughter's 5 feet and she's 10. Yes. And how tall is your wife, Evelyn? I really don't know. She's not... Uh, is she yeah, taller than I? Never. She's uh, no, about no, the same, I'd say. I'm 5'2". Yeah. I don't really know. You see, I don't... I'm so used to see her that... She's about the uh, a little taller than yeah. I'd say. Yes, yes. maybe 5'5". Five, five. That's about average like height that. for a woman now. In the picture, the two of you are the villains. Mm -hmm. And actually, you're, you're the man behind the villain, are you not? Yes, Bebe? yes. Yes, and you're going to take on James Bond in some scenes, I uh, understand. Well, I tried to knock him off twice. Yes. Is it, is it giving too much away to ask you how you plan to uh, do that? One time I do it with a knife, and I missed. And another time, I do it with a trident, you know, like Neptune. Uh-huh. And uh, then He I lives underwater most of the time. Then I start throwing things at him, you know, like battles and ash tree and things like Behaves that. Behaves very badly, as a matter of fact. Very badly. Behaves what do you mean? Badly. Behaves very badly in the picture. Yes, I'm not... Yes, uh, yes. It keeps I on... You know, really, I'm very, very pleasant character in this film. <laughs> he keeps begging you. Oh, all the time, you know, from one terrible back. thing to another. Oh, when yes. When you tell me yes. to do it, I do it. <laughs> now, when, when you're in scenes together, is this any particular problem for Guy Hamilton? Not, not to me. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, you just say to the camera, it. stay with me. Is that what you say? I'm sure he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, please. Sit moving around. No, I don't think it presents a problem. It never does. Look, if people are prepared to take the trouble, it's no problem. The classic instance of this, I suppose, being in a film like Shame, the Jack Palancer is very nearly as tall as me, mm -hmm. and Alan Ladd, who is, as everybody knows, and this is not meant to sound in any way uh, a derogatory remark, he was not a tall man, he was a small man. Now, they got rounded, no problem. You never noticed. It depends on how you're prepared to shoot a scene, in, 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 almost geometrically. You can always do it. There's no such thing as a person being too tall or too short or to this, or to that. It's only used as an excuse. Yeah. What are the, uh, the reactions that you get from people that disturb you, Hervé? Um, well, uh, like I was saying before, pity, uh, people who murder me, or uh, people who uh, think I'm a toy. I mean, a lot of people uh, like to play with me. And, uh, pick I you up. Pick me up. Uh, you know, a, a uh, small women I have mean, that same problem. I think it's terrible. And it infuriates and, uh, me. Um, you know, I go along with it because I cannot explain to them my life story. But, you know, it's annoying. I mean, they say, oh, come on, I want to carry you. Oh, come on, I want to do this. I'm just a toy. I mean, I can't believe it. Yeah, do you women. fight? I get very feisty well, when people pick I don't me up. like a fight or a hassle. I mean, I try to run my life as without fight. But sometimes I lose my cool. It's that I... You don't have to worry about people picking you up, do you, Christopher? <laughs> well, uh, not in that sense, at any rate. The other doesn't come along off. Doesn't come along very much either, I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, Ever, one of the things that interests me very much about your background is that um, uh, if you hadn't gotten into acting and, and it's taking so much time, now, I suppose that today we would probably know you very well as an artist and a painter. Would yes, you know? um, I don't know if, if I will be, you know, successful, but um, I was a painter since I was six until 21. That's when I really work every day, every day. Now I work, you know, one at a time. But um, I used to be, uh, it was okay. I mean, I used to be successful in France. In America, I had a hard time because uh, they wanted me to market by painting like uh, bread. You know, make a hundred of them the same one. And I just give up that uh, kind of business. Yes. I want to do what I want. Erva, if you could have any painting in the world, no matter how unattainable it is, really, if we're, we're just playing a game, <coughs> if you could have any painting in the world, what would you like to have? Well, to tell you the truth, is a lot of paintings that I like to have. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for one. I would go for many different Any ones. particular school of art, though? Um, I like Braque. I like Picasso. I like, uh, I like the old master Corot. I like uh, Fragilico. I like, you know all this kind of painting. But, um, you know, if I, um, it's possible if I have money, I will start buying paintings yes. for my own satisfaction. And the wonderful thing is now, though, that, that you can buy very good paintings that, that are attainable yes. for anyone. Yes, the only anyone. thing I feel that is nicer when the paintings are in the museum and everybody can see it. I mean, it's kind of selfish to have it home and nobody sees it. 
Christopher, if there, if you could have anything in the world, not necessarily a painting, but if you could have anything, what would you like to have? You mean in terms of material possessions? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know, I've never, ever thought about that. Haven't you? Really? And I really don't think I've got an answer. Think about it in 30 if, seconds. If, <laughs> uh, if you were going to say to me, what would I have wanted myself, I would say a career as a singer, to be honest, I think, because uh, I was born with that and I've never been able to use it. Well, it is that is a, an unrealized ambition, uh, so far as that is something that I certainly want, you know, but it is something very personal. Maybe someday we'll see you starring in a musical, and that would be very nice. Thank you both for talking with us today. Good Christopher sir. Lee and Hervé Villachez, and this is Bobby Wigan at Pinewood Studios outside London, England, on the set of The Man with the Golden Gun. Watch for it.